Hello, my name is Darwin Sonoy. I'm a principal consultant and trainer. I teach Windows installer classes at desktopengineer.com and Windows application internals courses at csiwindows.com. Today's demonstration is a follow-up from a session at Microsoft Management Summit 2009. I had the unpleasant experience of having a demo go bad and couldn't resolve the issue during the session. So this is a follow-up session to show that demonstration working as I had hoped it to uh, live. I've just logged into Windows 7. It's a plain vanilla configuration and I'm logged in with regular user permissions. You can see here that uh, UAC is enabled and the rest of these defaults are the plain vanilla UAC defaults that come out of the box when you install Windows 7 or Windows Vista for that matter. This UAC or this uh, BG Info uh, configuration here is downloadable from uh, CSIWindows.com. It's part of our toolkit and it's really helpful when you're testing applications on Vista or Windows 7. I'm going to open up a command prompt and change to our directory where we have our files for the test. All the files here are available for download as well. In fact, there's also 30 pages of labs contained within the PDF there that's in the folder and the labs step you through the tests that we're going to be doing as well as a bunch of other tests. The packages can also be used to test out how Windows Installer on Vista will respond in your production systems. So for example you could use this package detest.msi to run through your distribution system after you've set it up on Windows 7 to see how permissions are going to work out or how custom actions are going to execute based on how you normally use your packages in your environment. We're going to be looking specifically at a feature of Windows Installer 5 which is called pre-user applications. It's actually specific to Windows 7 so where a lot of the new things you come across in Windows Installer are new as of Vista, pre-user applications are new as of Windows 7 which is also MSI 5. Pre-user applications allow a single MSI package to do a traditional installation to all the machine-based locations, program files on the C drive, as well as the HKey classes or HKey uh, local machine registry key. Per-user applications allow you to take that same package and if the package has been coded correctly, give it a new property and that new property calls, causes the entire package to switch modes so that all the files and registry keys go into the user's profile. So we'll take a look at how this works now. I'm going to type a command line here that will allow us to install this package in a per-user uh, application mode. First of all, it's important to realize that the new property that we're going to use to change the package mode must be paired together with an old property, all users. All users must be set explicitly to two, otherwise the new property will be completely ignored. This also implies something else. It implies that per-user installations are enabled in your environment. There's two primary policies that you may have enabled that would cause per-user applications not to work in your environment. The first one is Disable MSI or Disable Windows Installer. If you're in the Group Policy Editor under the Installer Policies, it's called Disable Windows Installer. And if it's set to four non-managed apps only, then per-user installations from the command line will not work correctly. They can be pushed through SMS or Group Policy. Uh, in the registry, the same policy is Disable MSI, and it's a regd word value set to 1. The other policy that might disable per-user installs in your environment is called prohibit user installs in group policy. And if it is set to hide user installs, then you will not be able to use the all users equals 2 property on the command line. This policy in the registry is disable user installs, also reg D word, set to 1. And if either of those policies are turned on, then you will not be able to use this new support. I should also point out that these properties, uh, all users equals 2, as well as the new property we're going to use, can be coded directly into a package's property table, and the package will use them. Uh, so sometimes you have to be careful uh, of new packages that may have it coded right into the property table. The new property is MSI install per user, and it's set to 1. When we set it to 1, we are now going to enable the capability to flip this entire package so that it will install totally isolated to the user's profile. 
let's make sure we have a package name in here before we get started. And here's what went wrong in the demonstration. I was anxious to get through a couple extra demos and I kept slamming through this dialog box here. This particular setting here, anyone who uses this computer, causes the all users pro property to change back to one. So where it needs to be two, like I put it on the command line, leaving this dialog at its default changes it back to one. So if we're going to run it interactively, we need to change it to only for me. Now, normally after I hit the next button here, I would get a UAC dialog prompting me for credentials if I was doing a per machine installation. Watch what happens when I click next. We get no UAC dialog, but the installation completes normally. I want to take a look at where our resources ended up. First of all, we'll take a look in the standard location that you're used to seeing the files, which is program files. Our folder begins with desktopengineer.com and we can see by looking here that there is no folder that starts with desktopengineer.com. We uh, end up um, putting our files in a new location in the profile. Uh, it's in local app data. Local app data has been established as of Windows Vista, but only in Windows 7 is, does it become the standard location for installing software to the user profile. Under local app data, we have a new subfolder called programs. And even if we weren't using Windows Installer to install our software, this is where we would want to put uh, software that gets installed to the profile from Windows 7 on. So I'm going to do a directory of the programs folder. And I can see here we have our desktopengineer.com subfolder. And that's where our software put its files, our package put its files. Take a look now at the registry keys. In uh, regedit, we can see here I have a sudo com registration in the package and it's uh, visible here in H key classes root. For those of you who are not familiar with H key classes root, it's not a real registry hive. It is actually a mashing together of two registry keys. Uh, the first one is current user software classes. So everything in this key here, as well as everything in the same key in local machine software classes, is mushed together and placed in H key classes root. This merged view uh, gives the per user settings precedence. So if anything is specified in both per user and per machine, then the per user one is what shows in H key classes root. So we can see that our COM registration went into current user software classes. We can also see here that our software key for our actual software package went into current user as well. Just to be sure that that's the case, we'll also check out the software key under local machine. And we can see we have no desktopengineer.com key, and we've already seen that we have no com registration key here. So all of our registry keys have also been redirected to the current user registry. The ability to soft code the registry key location for current user or local machine has been in Windows Installer for quite some time. But since it hasn't been commonly used, I want to take a moment to explain how that's done. First of all, with COM registrations in your MSI package, if you code them to actually be destined towards H key classes root, then they will automatically switch to local machine for a per machine install or current user for a current u per, uh, per user install. For your registry keys that are part of your software, such as uh, our registry key here, desktopengineer.com, those registry keys can be coded to change between the two hives based on a special coding in your MSI package. For s tools like WISE and Install Shield, where you're dealing with it graphically, you look for an H key user selectable registry hive. As you can see, that's not a real hive in the registry, but only within an MSI package, it is a special place that when you code your registry keys to that, they will install to current user on a per user install and to local machine on a per machine install. If you're dealing with the registry in the registry table, when you add your registry keys, you'll go to the registry table and in the root column, you'll change the value or code the value to negative one, which is not really in the Windows API. It's not really a registry hive that's available. It's a signal to Windows installer to switch that registry key based on the type of installation that's done. 